Welcome, brave souls, to the chilling depths of horror and detail. The realm where the shadows whisper ancient secrets and nightmares come to life. I am your guide through the darkness, and on this channel, we delve into the spine-chilling world of we horror stories that will send shivers down your spine. First story. I bought a mystery box off the dark web. I don't know what I was thinking really. I had been drinking with friends and got home drunk. I decided to open tour and one link led to another. I ended up on a marketplace website that was selling all sorts of shady shit. I could buy my own weight in cocaine if I saw fit and had the money. Though something caught my interest. A posting said, mystery box, made to order, $250. I read the description, which listed what it could contain. A brand new iPad. That was it. That was the thing that made me send $250 worth of Bitcoin to some random guy in some random place on the internet. I had vague memories of sloppily messaging the seller that I really wanted the iPad. Oh God. I remember sending them an extra $50 to sweeten the deal. What a dickhead. When I woke, my head hurt. I had a full-blown migraine. It wasn't until I'd had breakfast, showered and opened up my laptop that I remembered. My heart sunk. I didn't have money to waste on shit like that, but I did. I clicked the button to message the seller to tell them I changed my mind, but nothing happened. I refreshed the page, and as you can guess the listing wasn't found. Now, I didn't think myself to be an idiot. I wouldn't fall for 411 scams. I know no Nigerian prince wants to send me money. But drunk me. He's a bit of an asshole. I checked my Bitcoin account to see it tell me that I was out of untraceable money. I swear I had at least $750 worth in there. If you take the exchange rate of the day, with the way it fluctuates it may have been only worth $300. I was depressed for the rest of the day. I promised myself I wouldn't do anything like that again. But then drunk me is a real, you know? Weeks passed and I completely forgot about it. To be honest, I didn't want to remember how stupid I was. Today though I did remember. I walked downstairs to see a large brown box on the kitchen table, addressed to me. My dad must have received it from the mailman when he was getting ready for work. I stared at it, shocked to see it had actually arrived. I picked it up, the weight was lopsided, but it was heavy. That was a good sign. At least it wasn't filled with packing chips. I pulled off the tape and opened it up to reveal a lot of packing chips. I chuckled to myself before plunging my hand in. I pulled out an anonymous red sweater. I held it to my face. It smelled of perfume. It was used. I was slightly disgusted, but what did I expect from the dark web? I placed it on the table next to me. The next item was a set of keys. I examined them and wondered why on earth that was part of this parcel. It was literally like the guy just shoved some random things into a box and sent it off. I was beginning to feel ripped off. I placed my hand in again and pulled out a small bag with a note attached. I knew what it was before I read it. I was excited. A little thing to make the time pass more calmly. Written in Sharpie. It was a good amount of weed. I'd never bought drugs off the internet. I opened the bag to see if it was the real deal, and that strong skunky smell rose up. I took a deep breath and sighed. I'd say it was $70 worth give or take. I pushed it into my back pocket, worried that my mom could be up in any minute and catch me with it. I was intrigued to see what was remaining. Maybe I'd make my money back yet. The next item was a small wooden box. I opened it to see a few pieces of silver jewelry. I checked each one having no idea if it was worth anything. There were two necklaces and two rings. I wondered if these were stolen or bought from a pawn shop. I placed it next to the red top. The next was another baggie, with another note written in Sharpie. You'll need these, trust me winky face. I was a little anxious when I read the note and saw a small box of Xanax inside. What the fuck did I need anxiety medication for? 
I was not one to dabble in prescription drugs. Weed and a little mushrooms was all I needed. I knew some friends who'd pay good money for that. I had no idea how much they were worth, though. I'd look it up later. I assumed $50, so that was $130 so far. And to be fair, for something off the dark web, if I only lost around half my money, I should count myself lucky. I fished around in the box again and couldn't feel anything else. I picked it up to feel it was still heavy. I placed it down again and stood up. I reached all the way to the bottom and felt something large and slender. I pulled it out. It was an iPad. Holy shit. Jackpot. It was slightly scratched, but it wasn't a first generation. It was light and thin. It was at least an air. I was stoked. It was then my mother popped her head around the corner. Hey honey, did you get a package? Yeah, I said. Suddenly aware I could smell the weed in my back pocket. Hey, you found my sweater, she said delighted. Where was it? Ah, oh, was all I mustered. She picked it up and unconsciously the keys too. She walked away. I sighed, worried she'd smelled the drugs. What's that? She said turning. I'm holding it for a friend. I said without thinking. What? She said, not paying attention. What's my jewelry box doing down here? I stared at my mom's slack jawed. She picked it up and opened it, studying if anything was missing. Well, answer me, she demanded. It was in the package, I said honestly. Don't bullshit me. Were you going to sell this? No. I promise. Just wait until your dad gets home. Jesus, dadding. I swear this is not your stuff. It was in my package I bought off the net. You expect me to believe you bought my exact top and my jeweler a box off the internet? Why in God's blazes would you do that? It was a mystery box. It could have contained anything. You come up with some shit sometimes. I think it's best if you go to your room. I'm 17, I said. When you're under our roof, it's our rules. I picked up the iPad and went upstairs. I laid on my bed and turned the device on. I was surprised to see it still had power. A few non-standard apps appeared on the desktop as I swiped to unlock. Nothing of interest though. I checked the email program to see that it was blank. I was worried it was stolen and knew I couldn't keep it if there were any personal data on there. I checked the photos app. There were around a dozen photos. I tapped the first, it was a low light shot of a street, could have been any. I swiped and the next was of the front of a house. The light was on in the front room, but in the low light, it overexposed the shot and made it hard to see any detail. The next was of the side of a house. The horizontal white wood siding looked similar to ours. The next was of what appeared to be a rear door. Then one of a kitchen. I did a double take. The place looked identical to ours. Then one of the living room, the TV bright and hiding the faces of the people who sat on the couch and chair. Then one of the stairs. The brown waxed wood of the floor was uncanny and my heart thumped in my chest. Then one of the landing. This was no coincidence. It was our house. The family portrait that hung on the far side wall, even in the low light, was obviously ours. I panicked and didn't want to swipe again, though I did. My parents' bedroom. My mother asleep on the bed. The bed covers pulled taut. The next few, the covers being pulled back gently. My mother pulled her legs up from the sudden cool air. The cupboard open. A black gloved hand reaching out and searching. The hand holding a red sweater. A dark photo with lines of light obscuring the view. Another dark photo this time the exposure was better and I see it's from inside the cupboard. My dad was in the room. The next my dad getting into bed next to my mother. Then one of the bed. My parents sleeping. I swiped again and saw the covers pulled back. Whoever it was doing this wanted to be caught. I was sure of it. After that, in the hallway again. 
the black gloved hand holding the jewelry box outstretched. Only one photo remained, and it was above a bed with someone sleeping below. It was me. My blood ran ice cold. I threw the iPad to the floor, hearing it crack against the side of my desk. No, no, no. I said to myself. I leaped up and saw the screen stare back at me with a rainbow mosaic of broken LCD and glass. What was I going to tell my parents? They'd never believe me. I pulled the bag of pills out of my back pocket and read the note again. You'll need these, trust me, winky face. I turned it over to read a date. July 21st, 2018. It must have been when the package was sent. I read it again and realized that's tomorrow, Saturday. Fuck. What does it mean? I have to warn my parents. Please, if you don't hear from me, call the authorities. I fear the worst. Second story. I searched my parents' names on the dark web. The videos I found were horrifying. When my friend first introduced me to the dark web, I was amazed at how such an unknown thing could house some of the most illegal things on earth. Up until today, I had only used it for learning how to code and commit small crimes. But after the horrifying videos I just found, I don't think I'll ever use the dark web again. I first met my best friend Alex when a little bit after I got into high school. My parents had moved us to a new town and I had no friends. It was lonely at first, but I got used to it. We moved because they were paranoid after many murders occurred in our town. I thought this was weird, moving across the country over that, but I let it go. The reason Alex and I became friends so quickly was because we both had a shared interest in the internet and everything it had to offer. I was a gaming addict and a tier 3 Pokemon subscriber, while he was more of a coder and developer. Two years later we were still best friends, but now, we were much older and smarter. Alex had discovered the dark web, and he was obsessed with it. He pretty much spent every hour of the day on it searching through anything you could imagine. There was nothing wrong with this, but one search he made was the biggest mistake of his entire life. I remember waking up to dozens of text messages from him one morning. This wasn't normal. Alex wasn't a very social person, and it was very hard to get words out of him. I opened my phone to see what he had messaged me. Dude, Jack, you have to come over right now. This is important. Jack, please wake up. This is urgent. Where are you? These were only some of the messages, but the rest were very similar, with them all being urgent and that I needed to go to his house immediately. My parents were both at work still, so I went over to Alex's house. When I arrived, there were four cop cars parked in front of his house, and there were dozens of people in news vans standing out front. I made my way through the crowd and Alex's mother told the police to let me inside. I could see tears rolling down her cheeks as she opened the door. What's going on Mrs. Gonzalez? I asked, Alex missing. She said as she started crying. My heart sank. How could this happen? He had just texted me earlier that morning. That was when it hit me. What if he was trying to warn me? What if his text messages were related to his disappearance? Still in shock, I walked up to one of the detectives in the kitchen. Is Alex going to be okay? I asked. Of course he is. He's going to be just fine. We're going to find him very soon. One of the detectives responded. Something about that response was off. It was like I knew he was wrong. Deep down I had this slight feeling that I wasn't going to see him ever again. I remembered the text messages however, and pulled out my phone to show it to the detective. He texted me this morning. What if this has something to do with him going missing? I said swiftly. As he began reading them, his expression quickly changed. It was like it got worse. He told me they needed to keep my phone for now to investigate the text messages and said they would give it back to me later. I stayed around the house for a while, not just because I missed Alex, but because I wanted to comfort his parents. They cared about me a lot, and it hurt to see them like that. His mother couldn't stop crying. 
Eventually, however, I went into Alex's room to see if I could find anything that might give a clue about why he went missing. I searched through everything, but I found nothing, but then I noticed something. Alex's computer was on, but his monitor was turned off. I looked for the button to turn it on and hit it. As the screen lit up, my heart sank. He was on the dark web. Obviously this was normal, but for some reason, he had dozens of different tabs opened. I knew this part wasn't normal, so I closed the door and locked it and began going through them. At first it was all pretty usual for him, but then things started to get weird. He had a tab open that was an article about a murder that had happened several years ago. The article said that it was a woman who was found dead in her apartment. Her body was mutilated, cut up, and covered in acid. I nearly threw up reading it and seeing the horrifying pictures of the crime scene. Not wanting to see any of it anymore, I switched the tab just to reveal another article about another murder. Confused, I quickly went through the rest of the tabs he had open, and they were all the same thing. They all were about some type of murder or crime. The one that stuck out the most to me, however, was one about a murder that had happened two years ago. At first it seemed pretty normal, but as I read further, I realized what it was. It was about the murder of our neighbor that prompted us to move away. Confusion quickly swept over me. How did Alex know about this? I never told him about it, because to me, it wasn't that important. I figured it must have just been a strange coincidence, but then I saw the last search he had made on his computer. It was my last name. Horrified and confused, I quickly stumbled out of his room and back to the living room. Is everything all right? Alex's mother said sniffing away her tears. Yeah, I just need to go home for dinner. I responded. On the way home, so many questions and thoughts filled my mind. Why was he searching up my last name? Did he think that I had something to do with this? That must have been why he was texting me so frantically that morning. If only I could just explain to him that I didn't do anything wrong, but I couldn't. He was still missing and I had to find out why. When I got home, I raced to my room and slammed the bedroom door shut and got on my computer. I loaded up my Tor browser and turned my VPN on. I knew what I had to do. I began typing in the letters of my last name, becoming more nervous after every letter. When I finally hit enter, nothing happened. It was just a blank screen. Confused, I refreshed the page. But once again, there was nothing. But why did Alex search this if there was nothing? I thought to myself. There must be something out there. I was getting ready to close the tab, thinking I had ran into a dead end. When suddenly, the page started to load. It took several minutes, but finally, it loaded to reveal hundreds of videos. Immediately, I knew what they were. They were murders. But why did they show up when you search my last name? I considered just stopping right there and turning back, knowing the horrifying things I would see if I continued on. But I couldn't. I knew this had to be why Alex went missing. So I clicked on the first video. As it started playing, I saw what looked like a woman strapped to a chair in some sort of basement or something. I quickly recognized who it was. It was our neighbor from two years ago. I could tell because she had the same heart-shaped tattoo on her neck. She sat there for a minute, struggling, panicking, and screaming for someone to help. However, suddenly, two figures walked into frame. At first, I couldn't tell who they were, but as they turned around to face the camera, my heart sank. It was my parents. My father was holding a knife, while my mother was holding a small scalpel. They paused for a moment, before they started what was the most horrifying five minutes of my entire life. I watched as they cut her into pieces and listened as she begged for mercy, screaming the whole time. Blood filled the room as she took her last breath. When the video ended, it quickly went to another, revealing the exact same room and chair I had seen before. 
I was traumatized by what I had already seen, and I knew I couldn't watch any more of it. My parents were murderers, and I now knew the real reason we moved away two years ago. I knew there was something off about that, but I just never could have imagined that this was the horrifying secret that they had been hiding from me. This whole time I thought Alex was trying to accuse me of being responsible for these murders, but I was so wrong. He was trying to warn me. I scanned through more of the videos, each in the exact same room. I was just about finished, ready to go to the police so that I could tell them about what I had just seen when I noticed something. There was a new video uploaded today on the website. I quickly clicked on it and pressed play to reveal what looked like a man this time, strapped to the chair. He had a sack over his face, and I couldn't tell who it was. Once again, however, I saw my parents walk into the frame. My father walked up to the man and pulled the sack off his head. At first, I couldn't tell who it was, but then I realized who I was looking at. It was Alex. Third story. Please, stay away from the deep web. I had always been aware of the deep web. You hear the craziest, most fucked up stories from people who have the balls to explore it. Websites that involve human experimentation, hiring a hitman, and even watching people through their own security cameras. It's fucked up. But, honestly, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't just slightly interested. Now, just to point out, there was no malicious intent behind my exploration of the deep web. I was just curious to see if it really was as bad as people said it was. The first thing I stumbled upon was a website extremely centered around death, which gave me a really uneasy feeling. So I didn't hang around that webpage very long. It takes quite a bit to freak me out. So it's safe to say I was a little surprised that I couldn't even stomach the first website I clicked on. But hey... It's not supposed to be all unicorns and rainbows, right? Next, I clicked a website that was dedicated to watching people through security cameras. Most of the screens showed empty living rooms and patios. Some of them showed oddly filled rooms, like rooms that were packed with stuffed animals, and another that was eerily decorated with fucking Christmas lights and fake Santa Claus statues. Another screen showed a young woman doing yoga, that one had a lot of views, I didn't watch that one very long. Something inside me felt ill and just wrong. Like what I was doing was sickening. I shook my head, blinking away any more curiosity before I hovered my mouse over the tiny X to close the window. Right before I pressed the mouse, I saw a blue link under a black screen that said, Proceed with caution. I bit down on my back teeth yelling internally to leave the page. Don't click the link, it's not worth it. It could be murder. Would that make me an accomplice? What if it was someone skinning an animal or some shit like that? But, then again, what if it wasn't? I don't know what the hell propelled me to move my mouse away from the window, hovering it over the link instead. But that's where I ended up. My curiosity always got the best of me, and no matter how twisted my stomach felt, or how strong the feeling of dread was that lingered right over my head, I had to know. I really just had to know what the link led to, or I would go crazy until I finally figured it out. So, I pressed my mouse down and watched the link turn purple, felt my mouth go dry, and watched as the screen slowly loaded. The page was just compromised of a large screen like the security camera page, only it was just one. The room was concrete. It was dark. There must have been a night vision camera or something, because everything had a weird blue-green tinge, but you could tell there was little to no light. There was a dark liquid on the floor in a medium-sized puddle. I told myself it was gasoline. Don't ask me why. Movement in the far right of the screen caught my attention, and I immediately perked in my desk chair, inching my face closer to the screen of my laptop. It looked like an arm, like someone's forearm. They were standing there, not really moving but subtly swaying, just enough to not look completely still. Hey, I said, 
before shaking my head and slapping my mouth shut. Stupid. Then, the person walked, they walked over towards the left of the screen. I felt my stomach knot, felt my throat tingle and tighten, while rising in the back of my throat. I knew my mouth was open, gaping and my eyes were wide, face screwed up into an expression of pure disgust. It was a young woman. She looked like she couldn't be older than 25 or so. Long, dark and dirty hair was in tangles, like she'd been pulling at it. Her leg was dragging, her other skinny leg doing most of the work as she limped weakly. Her head was down, looking at the floor, and the sound of her dragging her foot across the concrete echoed in my silent room. I didn't think it could get any worse. I was so, so fucking wrong. Suddenly, the woman raised her head, and it looked like it weighed a ton on her tiny body. I hadn't noticed it before, only able to barely make out her side profile, but now it was clear as day. She looked around, eyes watering with tears and black makeup streaming down her face. Small strands of bloody thread were intertwined in her lips, messily tied, locking them together. Dark blood stained her chin, probably from where she tried desperately to open her mouth to scream before realizing she couldn't. Her dainty fingers were stained as well, the same color as the puddle on the concrete. My whole body felt weak. My stomach was sick. I tried to tell myself it was fake, that it was all a big hoax. My eyes scanned to the bottom left of the screen. 5,623. 5,623 people were watching. Unable to fight it any longer, I ran straight into the bathroom, puking my insides into the toilet bowl. Everything in me felt disgusting wrong, twisted. Once I was finally done, I laid on the floor of the bathroom, letting the cool tiles try to soothe my burning body. My head was spinning. I kept repeating to myself, over and over in my head, that I shouldn't have clicked the link. I should have left. I should have closed the fucking window and told my inner curiosity to go fuck itself. Instead, I was laying on the floor, the bathroom reeking of vomit, and my mind a complete mess over that the hell I was supposed to do. Should I get the link and send it to the police? Should I call them now? My first instinct was to copy and paste the link, just in case, then call the police and inform them of what was happening. Maybe they could trace the IP address or something. Maybe they would recognize the girl and know where to start looking. Maybe I could save her life. I'd feel really fucking dumb if this was all fake just to get viewers, but I wasn't about to gamble. Not with what was at stake. I ignored the dizzy feeling flooding my head as I jumped up, grabbing the doorknob and twisting it a bit too harshly. When I flung the door open, my phone buzzed in my pocket, scaring the living shit out of me. I stopped mid-panic and picked it up with shaky hands. I saw my girlfriend's name, and immediately slid to answer. My voice was a complete wreck, my eyes finding the screen where the girl shrunk down to the ground, the sound of her cries bouncing around the room, making my body feel rigid. I had nothing left to throw up, but I still felt so sick. Madeline, you're not going to believe what I just fucking saw. What? You? Are you okay? Have you been crying? No. I'm not okay, I answered, averting my eyes from the screen. I know you said to stay away from the deep web, but Dash, are you kidding me? Her voice went from caring to mad in a split second. I told you to stay away from that place. You never listen to me. You never fucking do. There's a girl. I said weakly, she's trapped in some basement or something. Her mouth is she's... Her mouth is like, sewn shut. There's blood all over her face and hands. I don't know what to do, Madeline. The woman's cries got louder, more desperate, but muffled. I'm so sorry. Close it out, clear your history, and never go back there again. I'm not kidding. 
But should I call Dash? No, her voice was stern now. You don't know if it's bullshit. It's probably staged to gain disgusting viewers, apparently like yourself. People do it all the time. That's why I said it'd be best if you just stayed away from there. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble. I didn't say anything, wordlessly walking over to the desk. My hands shook as I raised my mouse to the small X once more. My eyes watched the number of viewers slowly tick higher and higher before I closed the window. I felt even worse than before. Okowo, we can file a report tomorrow, just in case. But for now go to sleep and stay the fuck away. I can't believe you even went there in the first place. I didn't have the energy to argue with her. Guilt plagued my whole body, drowning me. It was all I could feel. I told her good night, that I was sorry, and that I loved her before I hung up and made my way to the couch to sleep. Or try to sleep. It didn't feel right even being in my bedroom, or being anywhere near my computer. Not while that girl was still trapped, unable to scream for help, unable to talk at all. I know it could be fake, but was that really a risk I was willing to take? I looked up some Google searches over what was fake on the deep web and read multiple stories about staged webcam videos, which made me feel a little bit better. It didn't make the sick, guilty feeling go away, though. It's safe to say that I didn't get much sleep. Every time I closed my eyes or even began to drift off, I would see the woman's face, the thread laced into her lips, the blood staining her mouth, her fingers, the floor. I continued to grow more and more anxious and uneasy, deciding that maybe getting out of the house, heading over to the local CVS and picking up some melatonin might help. I threw my blanket off slid on my shoes and grabbed my keys and wallet from the nightstand. The cool air felt amazing and did wonders to calm to whirlwind of thoughts in my head. I went to check the time, realizing I'd left my phone at home. Not a huge deal, the store was only a few minutes away from my house. I ended up buying melatonin and a stronger sleeping pill just in case those didn't work. I also got a pack of bottled water to help rehydrate after I vomited up all the contents in my stomach earlier. By the time I got home, I felt much, much better, which lasted about three seconds before I noticed that my front door was wide open. Now, I may have been in a state of shock and panic, but I never, never ever leave my front door open or even unlocked. My heart immediately began to race. I got out of my car, closing the door quietly and unlocking my trunk, grabbing the crowbar that I keep in there. Who's there? I yelled into the house, waiting for any noise. Who is in there? My own voice was shaking and weak. I was met with complete silence. Keeping the crowbar up and ready to strike, I walked to the couch and felt for my phone. As soon as I found it, I hit the emergency button and waited until I got a hold of a 9 to 11 operator, letting her know that I think my house was just broken into. She told me police would be on their way. After checking around the house for anything odd, I decided to give my girlfriend a call, letting her know what had happened. The phone rang, rang and then rang some more. After getting her voicemail I hung up, knowing she'd probably be asleep this late at night. I waited about 20 or so minutes for the police to show up and walked around with them like a scared puppy as they checked every room. They ended up just having me fill out a report telling me they'll keep patrol cars in the area just in case anyone else gets hit. As they were leaving, I checked to see if Madeline had called back yet, but there wasn't any missed calls. I, however, did notice several outgoing calls to her cell phone. Outgoing call to Madeline. 3.12 a.m. Outgoing call to Madeline. 3.14 a.m. Outgoing call to Madeline. 3.17 a.m. Outgoing call to Madeline. 3.20 a.m. And then another one at 3.56, which was around the time I'd gotten home. My mind went into an automatic panic, knowing for a fact that I did not make those calls. 
I quickly checked my texts, reading one I'd apparently sent out at 3.23 a.m. Hey, can't sleep. Gonna come over. Mind leaving the back door unlocked so I can get in? I didn't send that message. My stomach dropped. My heart thudded loudly in my chest as I noticed her reply directly underneath. Sorry, I was sleeping. Thanks for waking me up by the way. Lose your key again? It's unlocked. Don't be too late. Without a second thought, I jumped up, running to lock all the doors and windows in my house, keeping the crowbar tight in my hand as I ran to my car. I drove as fast as my little Civic would allow all the way to her house, ignoring any stoplights. It only took me three minutes to get there, but I still knew it'd be too late. I made my way to her back door, feeling every cell in my body burn when I saw it was wide open. My face was hot. My hands were shaking but I stepped in, crowbar raised like a bat, ready to swing. I tried to keep my emotions at bay as I looked around her dark house. Madeline? I called out, are you okay, babe? Nothing. Silence. Madeline? A small scream came from her bedroom just up the stairs. My legs jerked to a run as I flew up the stairs, slamming her door open. I looked at her empty bed, her empty room, confused. I heard the scream again, only this time. I heard that it was coming through her computer monitor. I felt numb as I looked at the screen, noticing the same website I saw earlier. Only instead of one woman, I saw two. The first was lying on the floor, not moving, in that puddle of dark liquid. I recognized the second girl, just as I had recognized her voice. My heart shattered as I saw her face, streaked in blood. The same threading was sewn into her eyelids, locking them shut. Her scream hit my bones, surrounded my body. It was all I could hear. Her face was twisted in pure terror. I cried pathetically as her voice began to go out, continuing to grow weaker and rasped. I locked my jaw, picking up my cell and dialing 9 to 11 for the second time. Only this time it barely rang once before the deep, gravelly voice of another man answered, You should not have called. Chills shot down my body, and I heard the phone thud as it hit the carpeted floor. My breath hitched in my throat as I bent to pick it up, hanging up the call and racing down the stairs. How did he do that? How did he redirect my call away from the police? I felt my heart race as I darted out of her back door, in a frenzy as I sprinted to the closest house. I pounded the door, screaming at the top of my lungs until the neighbor opened it, her face tired, confused and scared. She let me in, and I explained through frantic tears what happened. I'm typing this on my phone to post as we both try to get a hold of the cops, but neither of our calls are going through, and neither is her landline. I think someone is messing with our cellular signal, and they may have cut her line, but we're going to keep trying. I'm scared for me. I'm scared for my girlfriend, and I'm scared for my neighbor. I don't know what's going to happen to me. If you don't hear from me again, please take this advice and this experience to heart. Stay away from the deep web. For fuck's sake, please, please stay away from the deep web. Fourth story. I ordered myself on the dark web. I know you're frowning. The title is weird. I know. But, if you could just give me a moment I'll explain. I'll have to be fast though. I don't know how close they are. Essentially, I ordered myself on the dark web. I'm a drug user. I'll admit it. Weed is my usual go-to, but I buy that off my friend. If, however, I want to get something a little heavier, like acid or coke, I just order it off the dark web. It's surprisingly simple. A few clicks, some Bitcoin transfers, and then boom. I have acid in my P.O. box. But I'm also a curious guy. The dark web has always intrigued me. Up until a few days ago, I had only been on there to buy drugs off-site some of my friends gave to me. But, 
Late one night I was sober and at home, which was a rare thing for me. So, since I was bored I decided to boot up my Tor browser and try and see what sort of fucked up shit I could find on the dark web. If you've ever been on the dark web, you'll know that you can't just search up Red Rooms or Hitman for Hire and get results. No, you have to find links to these websites first. So I hopped back onto Google again to try and find some links to a messed up website. I know it's weird that I was actively searching for the worst, but as soon as I got on the dark web that night I had a sense of morbid curiosity overcame me. Anyway, I spent a little while trying to find some links. Anything that I found though was either too tame for me, or the links didn't work. At this point, I was about ready to give up, and I wish I had. But, in one final attempt, I clicked on Reddit. Hoping onto or slash deep web, I didn't think I would find anything. So, I just scrolled through hot for about half an hour before sorting by new. Then, I found it. 1. Simple text post titled, Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services. In the text box in the post was what seemed to be just a random assortment of numbers and letters, ZY3 Kitkob 2Y3. For those of you curious, it took my tired brain a second to figure out what it was, but I realized pretty quickly. It was a link, presumably to a Hitman website. So, I decided to paste the link into my dark web browser, and what do you know, it worked. But, before I decided to go any further I figured I should go back to OP's profile to see if they have posted any other dark web links. However, when I went back to the post in question OP's profile was deleted. Weird. Anyway, I reopened my dark web tab and hopped onto the site. Up along the top of the website was its name, Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services, and next to it what looked to be a skull inside of a crosshair. I chuckled when I saw that. The site must be fake. Upon scrolling down, however, I was not disappointed. There was a paragraph of white text on a black background, and a small box to the right of the text that just said, Place an order. The text was the main part, though, as it took up most of the page. It read, Slayer's Assassinations and Life Ruining Services offers everything from acid attack, crippling, blinding, castration, torture, rape, beatings, and good old death. We have the lowest prices out of any other company running similar services, and we are worldwide. We have a dedicated and experienced group of staff based all over the world, so if you need someone to be assassinated, or maybe you just want them scarred for life, don't hesitate to contact us. Again I laughed. This had to be satire, right? Hell, I was even tempted to order it on someone just to see what would happen. Ironically, I actually have a half-decent job, so I can afford to. Better not to risk it though, I thought to myself. I was about to close my computer and call it for a night when I heard a knock at the door. I live alone. So it was unusual to get visitors, especially so late at night. But, when I opened my door it was just my good buddy Mark, who also happened to be my weed plug. As I opened the door, he didn't hesitate to let himself in and shove a big baggie full of pot in my face. This dude, if the best shit I've had in a minute, we gotta try some. I couldn't say no. Fifth story. Why I quit buying weed off the deep web. Hello, I have a story slash experience I would like to share. It happened to me about a year and a half ago and still bothers me to this day. This will have to be more than one part. So this started back in December of 2015, and at this time I first started to discover the deep web. On the deep web I found stuff that you would expect like drugs and underage porn, which I didn't watch. I went to the deep web to buy weed and after converting a prepaid credit card to Bitcoin and sending it to my drug website account I was able to order weed. I don't want to say the website just in case it gets some unwanted attention from this. I had ordered weed several times by February, but something different happened when I tried to order from a guy with no user reviews. The guy had very good deal 
so I overlooked the possibility of getting scammed. Keep in mind when I ordered it, I gave the person the address to the abandoned house. When I ordered the weed on a Friday, it still hadn't been sent on Monday. I was impatient, so I gave the vendor a rating of one star and commented I would change it when I got the weed. For some reason this made him mad and cancelled my order and refunded me saying that he did it because I ruined his rating, even though I said I would change it. Anyways after that I ordered weed from another vendor which came in three days. I ordered weed to an abandoned house and used a fake name. Unfortunately I forgot the name I went by. But when I got the package of weed out of the mailbox I noticed that was another packing envelope. I grabbed it and noticed that my real name was used, which didn't make sense because I didn't live there. I started to feel nervous as I looked at my real name on the envelope. I put both packages in my shirt and rode my bike back home. When I got home I went straight to my room and put the package of weed to the side and opened that one with my real name. When I opened the package and saw I shit you not I saw two photos, and when I grabbed them to look at them I really started to panic when I saw a picture of my school at night when nobody was there, and the second one was worse. The second picture was not a picture of my neighborhood, specifically the spot where you make a U-turn, and at the U-turn was my house and two other houses. My heart at this point was racing 1,000 miles an hour, I didn't know what to do. And as I was throwing this envelope away I noticed one last thing. There was no postage stamp or return address. Edit. I'm putting the second part in this post. Part 2. This is part 2 of this story. If you have not read the first part some of this might not make sense. The link to the first part will be in the comments. So it had been like 2 days after I got that in the mail and for these 2 days I was paranoid as hell. I was staying in my house, because if anyone was watching, I didn't want them to know what I look like or which house I live in. Well after two days of nothing happening I got comfortable enough to go and finally shoot basketball. After I played basketball, I started to feel like whoever was there went away finally. But I was wrong. The reason I realized I was wrong was because I went out the next day to play basketball again. But I noticed something. My basketball was caved in the same way a basketball would do if it had no air. I walked up to my basketball and saw that it was cut open like someone stabbed it. I was angry because I bought that basketball, but I think that feeling was overpowered by fear when I realized who must have done it. Whoever was stalking me was watching me play basketball yesterday. As soon as I thought that I quickly looked around to see where this person was, but I didn't notice anything. I threw the stabbed basketball into the woods, because if someone saw it they would ask me why. For the rest of the day I stayed in my house not knowing what to do. I barely got any sleep if at all. On my way to school that morning, I didn't really get sleep but I was alert. I was looking everywhere for something suspicious, and I found something. On my way up to school we drove by the abandoned house I ordered my weed to and I saw a tan pickup in front of the house. I thought that the owner of the house must have came to check his mail, but out of all the times using that house nobody ever used it. I knew that when I got home I was going back to the house to check the mail, because I had a suspicion that whoever that was put something in the mailbox. I was anxious to get home that day. And when I was in car line to get picked up I saw a tan pickup truck similar to the one I saw this morning. This time I could see it better. It had tinted windows and was a GMC. What scared me even more was that I never saw him pick anyone up. Eventually my dad picked me up and when we got home I told him I was going to ride my bike. And I cautiously rode my bike all the way to the abandoned house. When I got to the mailbox and opened it up there wasn't an envelope of package instead it was a note on a white piece of paper. I grabbed the paper looked at what it read. The paper said, wanted to play basketball, but you left too early. Sixth story. I made a mistake going on the deep web. Before I start I just want to apologies in advance for any spelling mistakes I make as I write this I am quite rushed. Hey Reddit yesterday I went onto the deep web through my shitty 2009 laptop 
to see what it was like, and I think I have made a grave mistake. To start off I should explain why I was on the deep web in the first place now the main reason I was going on the deep web was just so I could brag to my friends about how I could access something they couldn't on the internet. Now after telling them about this they thought I was full of shit and that I was too big of a pussy to go on the deep web slash darknet. So I invited everyone over to my house after my school so that we could browse the deep web together. That is when the shit hit the fan. So me and my friends were all huddled around my laptop, looking at the screen eager with anticipation of what was to come from this secret underground internet. It started off pretty normal with us just going on forums and shit just kinda dicking around. But it was when we went on this site that called itself Bulala Inlu. I later put that in on Google Translate and figured out that it meant killing house in some language called Kosa. Now as soon as we went on the website me and my buddies were greeted by pictures of small children who were dead and naked. At first my friends and I thought this was all some sick joke because our tiny 14 year old brains didn't want to accept what we were seeing. So we scrolled down hoping we would find something that would tell us this website was just some sick fucks idea of a prank. But we never did. After about 5 minutes of scrolling and clicking around a little box greeted my screen and in the box was all of my information like my phone number, my address, my social security number, and my full name. As soon as I finished reading this I immediately shut off my computer and my friends and I all looked at each other in complete shock. We had no clue what to do. Looking back on it, it was stupid what we finally decided to do. You think that maybe we would go tell my parents or go to the police, but nope we had the fucking amazing idea to go back on the site and see if all of my info would appear again and maybe ask someone on the site about it. Yeah I know go back to the site with naked, mutilated, murdered children and ask people on it for advice after getting all of my personal information told to me. So I turned my computer back on and as soon as it booted up I was displayed a window saying, Please Scott, don't leave us, we want to play with you and have some fun. Once I saw this I told all my friends to go home and hide. Whatever this was I didn't want my friends getting hurt because some creeps liked me. It was strange though as soon as my friends went home another message appeared saying, If you can entertain us by playing our game you won't die and we will leave you alone in peace. Here are the rules of the game rule 1. Every 48 hours you must complete a task. Rule 2. If you do not complete the task or try anything funny you will be brutally murder. We are watching you. And the final most important rule being rule 3. Is have some fun. After that another window of text appeared saying, Your task is to kill. Rape and eat your biological mother. Enjoy. Love. Please Reddit I need some help with this and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should call the police or do the task or anything. Just please help me I have made this about 20 minutes into my 48 hours. If I can I will update this soon with further information. 7th story. I went on a chat on the dark web. Hi I'm Katie and this is what happened when I went on the dark web. After school I went on my phone and clicked on the app TikTok and started watching videos on there. I saw one video about a guy who went on the dark web and saw some pretty weird stuff. For some reason curiosity got in me, and I went to Google and searched up the dark web. I thought there would be a website that would lead to the dark web, but I guess there wasn't. I started looking on tutorials on how to get on there on YouTube, and it said I needed some kind of browser to do it. So I did everything the tutorial did, and as soon as that I was on the dark web. I was scrolling through the dark web and saw some freaky stuff. I saw girls for sale and drugs, guns, and stuff I don't even want to get into. Then I saw a chat on there. I remembered one time I went on Omgle so I guess it would be just like that. That's what I thought. I clicked on it and there was just a regular chat. People talking and I decided to join it. The chat said you must create a username. I decided for mine to be katiegirl901. Some dude 343, hey some girl just joined the chat. Ricky user 000, hey Katie girl 901 how are you? 
I was surprised that people were trying to talk to me since I just joined the chat, but I didn't want to be rude, so I said something back. Katie Girl 901 I'm good. Just new to this thing. Kim 22 How old are you BTW? I didn't know what to say. Was he a creep? Was he trying to get to know all my information? Or was he just a normal dude asking questions? Katie Girl 901 I'm 17. Why? Kimp 22. Just asking questions. Cutie. What the hell did he just say to me? I was nervous but also flattered at the same time. No one before has ever called me cutie. Katie Girl 901. Um. Thanks? Kimp 22. No problem. Some dude 343. So Katie where you from? Katie Girl 901. Why do you want to know? Some dude 343. Hey I'm just trying to know more about ya. Katie Girl 901. California. Some dude 343. Cool. Out of nowhere I felt like someone was watching me but I thought it was just my nerves going up and down since I was on the dark web. Ricky user 000. Hey Kimp wanna go in private chat? Kimp 22. Sure I'll make a private room. Kimp22 has left the chat. Ricky user 000 has left the chat. I was curious why they left the chat, but since they did I decided to talk more to some dude 343. Katie Girl 901. What's your real name, some dude? Some dude 343. Alex. I'm guessing yours is Katie. Katie Gertichel 901. You got it. Some dude 343. I think Kemp was right about something. Katie Girl 901. What's that? Some dude 343. You are a cutie. After I heard that I got scared for some reason. Was it because he was guessing I was cute? Or was it because he could see me? Katie Girl 901. Dude why is everyone saying that to me? Some dude 343. I guess you're just special. After that a notification popped up on my screen and said, some dude 343 has invited you to a private video call. A video call? What did this dude want? I was so curious but scared and nervous at the same time. But I accepted the video call. What I saw freaked me out. It was a video of my house and me by my computer. I screamed as loud as my lungs could take it. On the call, I suddenly heard a man maybe in his early 20s laughing. The guy then said you were a cutie. That's all I remember until everything went black. There were three men around me. One of them sounded like the guy that video called me. All of them said are you ready cutie? I guess I am now everyday making videos. Ones that I hope I never had to make in my life. I hope I get help someday. But everyday their voices will haunt me and every time they call me cutie.